Hi. I hope that wherever you are today, whatever you've just finished doing and whatever it is you're going to be doing next, you'll have the opportunity to set aside a few minutes to spend some time hearing what God might have to say to you and what he might want to hear back from you. I'm recording this just a couple of hours after we heard the announcement that the stay-at-home order in the province of Ontario has been extended for another two weeks, <sighs> which, although it's not entirely discouraging, is certainly frustrating. I think we're all getting pretty weary of the situation and very much looking forward to seeing its end. Today we're going to be spending some time, particularly in prayer, talking to God about things that are happening in our world and in our lives. And we're going to begin our time together by praying a prayer that I found in a book. There are some wonderful prayers in books. This is a book I bought a few years ago, and I mostly just bought it for the, type, for the cover. How awesome is that? It's like the blessing of the motorcycles or something. Anyway, we begin by praying together. O oh God, our Father, the life of all who live, the strength of the weak, and the hope of all who are in distress, put today your truth into our minds and your purity into our hearts. Strengthen our wills so that we may be always able to choose the right and always refuse the wrong. Help us at all times to bear one another's burdens and to forgive one another's faults so that we may obey your law and become daily more like Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. Welcome to First Baptist Church, our online service for this Sunday. Um, today is a special day. Um, First Baptist Church belongs to the Convention Baptist of Ontario and Quebec. That's our broader denomination. And uh, our denomination, the CBOQ, has declared this Sunday to be a national day of prayer, specifically with relation to the pandemic and everything else that has gone along with it. And so... Um, what we've decided to do is have kind of a prayer time, a prayer meeting together online. And I'll explain a little more about what that's going to look like um, towards the end of my sharing time with you. Now, prayer can be something that we don't always fit into our lives. It, it can be easily neglected. And so it could be the kind of thing that we only turn to when we're in trouble. You know, prayer can be like a fair weather or a foul weather friend, I guess. We only turn to it in troubled times. But it is something that is vitally important. Um, we're doing a Monday evening study in the book of Mark, the Gospel of Mark. And we came across um, Mark chapter 1, where Jesus said, uh, or it was, told, it was said about Jesus, that before daybreak the next morning, Jesus got up and went to an isolated place to pray. Now, first of all, let me just say that if you go to First Baptist Church, you're more than welcome to join us Monday night at uh, 7 o'clock on Zoom. You could either go by video or by phone and be a part of our study. And if you want to be part of it, check out the link on the e-bulletin that you get. And if you don't get that, um, then call the church. And if you're, or if you're not part of First Baptist Church and you think, hey, I'd like to be part of a Bible study of, God, of the Gospel of Mark, phone the church, 905-885-6021. 905-885-6021, and we'll get you plugged in. But Jesus went away to an isolated place early in the morning to pray. And this happened a number of times over Jesus' life, if you look at the Gospels. And it always seemed to happen right before Jesus was going to make a big decision or something big was going to happen the next day. Um, Jesus did this often early, always alone, it was a time to focus intently and, and just, yeah, really focus on communion and fellowship with God. Now, the question is, if Jesus was the Son of God, if he was 100% human and 100% God at the same time, and he felt the need to get away by himself and pray and communicate with 
the God of the universe. And how much more do we, as humans, need to carve out that time in our day to be able to just lay everything else aside and focus on God and talk to him and to listen to him? Not only is it important to pray, but it's important to, to pray together, which is kind of what we're doing today as best we can using the technology that we have. In Acts 1 and 2, chapter 1 and chapter 2, we see the beginning of the church where the Holy Spirit came and transformed the disciples in a powerful way. Peter preached the church's first sermon and thousands were saved and became Christians. What led to that? Well, Acts 1.14 says that they were all together and were constantly united in prayer. They were in an upper room, the King James Version calls it. They were a place where they were together and focused on praying and seeking God. And when they did that together, great things happened. Acts 4.24 talks about uh, how all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. And a few verses later, we see the result of that, Acts 4.31. It said, after this prayer, the meeting place shook, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Then they preached the word of God with boldness. The book of Acts tells us about groups of believers who, when they prayed together, great things happened. They were changed, and they were able to preach the word of God and share the message of the gospel with others with boldness. There's a church in New York City called the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I had a chance to visit there in the late 1990s, and it's been famous for the last 30 or 40 years for its choir, uh, for its pastor, Jim Simbola, who was the founding pastor, and he's been there like 40 years and has written a number of books and, and speaks at many pastor's conferences. I heard him a few years ago. But if you hear him talk about his church, I mean, the, the church, when I went to visit the church, there was like five services on a Sunday. When we went in, when we came out, there was a whole lineup of people ready to go in. There was just one service after another. With, and the, the, the hall would hold, you know, a few thousand people. But Jim Simbola would tell you that of all the events and all the services and all the, the meetings that are held in his church, the, the most important and the best attended, other than Sunday morning, is the prayer meeting. And he would tell you that the church started from nothing 40, 50 years ago, and it's become what it is because of their commitment to praying together. It's so important to be able to have that time to pray together. And if you're part of First Baptist, we get together on Zoom right now, every Wednesday at 7.30. And if you want to be a part of that, Again, check out the link on the e-bulletin or call the church and uh, we can give you the information to let you know how to be part of the Wednesday night prayer time, either by video, Zoom, or by phoning it in. So it's important to pray together. It's important to pray, period. And, and we need to know that it's okay to pray for our own stuff. It's okay to pray for our own needs. Philippians 4, 6 says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Now, in saying that it's okay to pray for our own stuff, I'm not meaning that we be selfish about it, you know, or we pray for our wants. Um, but it's okay to pray for our needs. It's okay to pray for what's on our heart. And we come to, before God not with an attitude of, a genie in a bottle and <laughs> saying the right words and getting what we want. But the scripture says that we come with thanksgiving. We come with humility. We come with an attitude of God. Thank you for all you've done. I'm not here to complain, but I really need your help in this area. And that is okay. We just come to, we come to God with the attitude that God is God and we're not. And we come to him in thanksgiving and humility, asking him for help because he does care about us. Not only is it important to pray for our own stuff, but it's also the pray for, important to pray for others, and that is our focus today. Ephesians 6.18 says, Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. It says to pray in the Spirit. Sometimes we just 
face a situation and we don't know how to pray. We don't know what to pray about. We face with different directions that seem equally good or equally bad, and we just don't know how to pray. And that's where we can rely on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can lead us and guide us in prayer so that we pray the will of God. So that our, we know that our prayers will be answered because the Holy Spirit is guiding us to pray in the direction that God would have us to pray. It's so important to learn to be able to pray in the Spirit. In this passage, the word all and every keeps coming up all the time. There, there's no situation that is off limits for prayer. God wants us to bring every situation to prayer, whether it's for ourselves or for others. And then it says to pray for all believers everywhere. Pray for our Christian brothers and sisters in our own church. Pray for those of the family of God that we know maybe as friends beyond our church. But also begin to, we need to begin to attune ourselves and inform ourselves as to what is going on in the Church of Christ around the world. There are countries where churches are illegal, where being Christian is pretty much illegal, where Christians are being persecuted and, and imprisoned and even killed for their faith. And we need to pray for them and really understand what it is they're facing. Um, we need to pray for the church worldwide, the church in Canada. Pray for all believers. But not only, we're not just supposed to pray for our own tribe, our own people. That would be kind of, well, that would be kind of selfish, I guess. We need to pray for everybody. Matthew 5.43 says, Jesus, this is his Sermon on the Mount, and he says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In other words, don't just pray for those who love you. Don't just pray for those who you get along with. Pray for those who you agree with. But pray for those who hate you. Pray for those who disagree with you. Pray for those especially who hate you for your faith. That we are called to pray for them. It is easy to pray for somebody that we like. But it is really hard to pray for someone that hates us. And we don't want to respond to hate with hate. In fact, I would say that it's very difficult to hate somebody that you're praying for. It's really difficult to hate somebody you're praying for. So if you're finding that it's really, really hard to love somebody and really, really hard to um, you know, think the best of them, the first challenge for us to do is to pray for them. It's, it's next to impossible to hate somebody that you're praying for. So if we're to pray for believers and, and people in the family of God, and then if we're to pray for those who hate us and persecute us, we're at the opposite two sides of the spectrum. It stands the reason we're supposed to pray for everybody else in between. And so that's what we're called to do today. That's what we're going to do today. We're going to pray for all kinds of different people especially related to the pandemic. So we have six people from our church who are going to lead us in prayer on six different topics. So the topic will be introduced. They'll lead a prayer of about, I don't know, 90 seconds, couple of minutes. And then after they prayed, there will be a couple of minutes of instrumental music played where you will get a chance to pray along the same lines about that topic. It's not the same as all praying together in person, but it's the next best thing. And so through the, the power of technology, we're going to pray together for all these different topics that we're going to present, all related to what we've been going through the last year, all related to the pandemic. And so, if you're ready, let's pray together.
And Lord God, Father, because we are grateful, Father, we seek your face. And Father, Lord, I come to you, O God, acknowledging, Father, your greatness. And I ask, O God, for those who have suffered loss, O God, those who have lost loved ones, O God. Father, I pray, dear God, that you hold them in your bosom, Father. Let them know your love, Father. Because I know you love us, O oh God, and your love changeth not for us, Father. Father, Lord God, help us, O oh God, in the midst of this trial to put our confidence in you. For you said you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And Father, for those who have died, O oh God, in you, knowing you, Lord God, you said to be absent, O oh God, in this body is to be present with you. So, Father, Lord God, I know those have gone on to a better place. But for those here, oh God, who have missed their families, oh God, because it's a different thing to have someone with you all the time and then after they're just gone. Father, I pray, dear God, that you will comfort. You'll comfort those and equip those, oh God, to deal with the loss, oh God, of a family member who might have gone on to be with you. Father, you said you're not going to leave us nor forsake us. So, Father, teach us how to embrace your love. Teach us to draw closer to you, O oh God. Because you are the merciful God. And you demonstrate your love time and time and time and time again, God. And in the midst of every situation, O oh God, I know you are here to direct our paths, O oh God. Let there be a zeal and determination for your word, O oh God. That your word is a daily practice, O oh God. That we will meditate on your word day and night. For in your word there is healing, O oh God. In your word, dear God, there, O oh God, is deliverance. Give us an appetite, O oh God, for your word, O oh God, a thirst and a hunger for your word, O oh God, that our emotions, O oh God, will not be drained, O oh God, but it will be focused on those things that is of you, Father, that we can declare your word and find strength in the time of our need. Father, today, we just thank you, dear God. Build a shield around those that are hurting, O oh God. Build a shield of around those who don't understand father give them understanding bless them with wisdom oh god and i pray dear god that you will minister to them let them not oh god lose interest but draw them closer to you knowing that you oh god love them and you want the very best for them father i ask oh god that you listen and you oh father you just have your way oh god this day this day for you are the great and mighty god and i know everything that i have asked in your name you are more than able to do it all father in jesus name i pray amen and amen and amen Good morning. 
Uh, I will be praying for the healthcare professionals that are out there. And um, uh, yeah, we're going to lift them up this morning in prayer and um, because they need it. They need us as the body of believers to, um, to lift them up and uh, to be thankful for them. And uh, we ask, I ask that we do this together. Okay, here goes. Heavenly Father, Lord, we as a body of believers, um, we lift up those healthcare professionals that are out there, that are serving, um, that are serving our communities, that are um, setting aside their own needs so that they can um, do the best jobs that they can possibly do. Father, we lift them up. We ask that you give them strength, wisdom, um, and uh, and uh, help them to, and to do um, whatever they need to do and um, uh, just meet their needs where they are um, professionally as well as um, personally because they are human and um, we all fall short. And Father, I just pray that you meet them where they are and give them the strength, the wisdom, the reassurance, the um, rest, um, whatever it is, Lord, help them to not be anxious for anything. Help them to um, not uh, uh, get lonely. Um, I pray, Father, that the, for those that uh, are not believers, that they turn to you for wisdom and um, be the best that they can be and uh, as they are serving in that capacity. And because it's tough. It can be tough. It doesn't matter whether they are um, PSWs, DSWs, um, uh, you know, nurses, doctors, so many different layers, so many different areas. Um, and uh, we just ask for an extra special blessing on them this morning, Lord. And um, and uh, you say that where two or more are gathered, that you hear our prayers. And, uh, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the promises in your word that we know are true. And um, anyway, we just, we lift them up. We lift the healthcare professionals up this morning as a body. And uh, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, throughout the, the whole season of COVID, when things have been so uncertain and sometimes frightening, we have always been provided for. There have always been people farming and manufacturing and delivering and ringing up sales and stocking shelves. There have always been people caring and constructing and repairing what needed to be. God, we thank you so much for the faithfulness of people who stayed on the job when they were asked to stay on the job, even when their circumstances became complicated and challenging. They kept on working, and God, we thank you for that. Many of us were in the opposite situation where we were told that we must not work, and regardless of where we are on which side of that line. God, we know that you are looking out for us and that you see each person, you see each heart, you see each mind. You understand 
the fears. You understand the hopes. And God, we pray that as uh, as hopefully things are reaching a conclusion with the worst of COVID, that you will continue to be strength for those who need it. Provide patience for those who need it. Provide graciousness for those who need it. God, we pray especially for safety, physical safety and emotional health for our essential workers as they continue to look out for us and to provide for us. And we pray that you will speak to their hearts and speak to their minds so that when things are difficult, they will turn to you for their hope as only you are able to provide. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You console and lead us in times of doubt and confusion. May we follow the light of your love and spread hope. We pray for government leaders and policy makers. May God grant wisdom and a desire to work for the good of all, both at home and abroad. Uh, Heavenly Father, uh, thank you for uh, a beautiful day. Thank you for uh, good health. Thank you for um, the opportunity uh, that we have uh, to uh, come together in, uh, even though it's uh, an electronic uh, Zoom thing, um, it's, uh, it's an opportunity that the majority of the population of the world probably doesn't have and uh, so it, at this time, we'd like to um, uh, bring to attention the, uh, the concern for a lot of people. We think of um, uh, um, uh, our, our seniors that can't be with us the way that they would like to be. And, uh, and many of them, Christine, I think of is, is quite handicapped and um, the, uh, the people that look after them are short-staffed and, um, and asked to work so many extra hours. But that's our, that's our situation here. It's probably a whole lot worse in other parts of the world. And um, I, I, I'm quite sure it is. Uh, it must be very stressful for a lot of people that 
And you even hear about people in their 20s and 30s that are uh, this COVID business. It uh, not not as many as as the elderly, but uh, and um, so we just we just want to bring to your attention, um, not that you're not aware of it, but um, would you help those who are stressed and having a difficult time? Um, those who, uh, I think of a fellow last winter who was living under bridges with four tents and a tarp and a campfire when the weather permitted. There are all kinds of people who, maybe now that the weather's more favorable, there might be more of that happening. But um, help us to keep these people in mind and help us to have the right attitude and to extend uh, a helping hand in whatever way we can. And uh, so we just ask all these things in the name of our Savior. Amen. Let's pray together for the church. Father, I thank you for your church. I thank you, Lord, for pastors and leaders who have been so faithful and have persevered through these challenging times and who have been creative in finding ways to minister to their people online and in different ways without meeting in person. Lord, I pray for the churches of the CBOQ, our denomination, that you would guide and direct, you would strengthen, you would encourage pastors who are discouraged, you would be with those who are doing well, that they would continue to give you the glory and do well, be with our assembly coming up in a few weeks, and guide the decisions that are made. Lord, I pray for the churches in, in our town here in Port Hope. I pray for Grace Missionary Church, who will be uh, whose pastor will be leaving in, in a month or two, and, and they'll be in a transition towards a new pastor. I pray that you'll guide their leadership and guide them. I pray for Calvary Pentecostal Church and for John Foster there. I pray for Kingdom Life Fellowship and Fellowship Baptist in Port Hope, neither of whom have a place to meet because they use rented facilities, and uh, it's been closed to them because of COVID. I pray, Father, that you would help them to be able to just maintain community together. I pray for Gospel Hall. I pray for St. John's Anglican Church. I pray for the other churches in town that you will continue to watch over them. Be with our uh, brothers and sisters in faraway lands who are, don't have the same financial resources we do and have found the pandemic difficult. I pray for churches, Lord, that have lost people due to, the, due to COVID, that you would continue to comfort and strengthen. Be with our brothers and sisters in the church underground who meet in places where the church and where Christianity is illegal. And I just pray, Lord, as we continue to face different restrictions and, and go through the, the, what is hopefully the tail end of this pandemic, Lord, that you would continue to be with your church and help us at First Baptist Church to continue to be your church, to be your hands and feet, to minister to a world that desperately needs you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.